Hi everyone. A uh, very good evening and welcome to every. I and I welcome all of you again on your uh, new session of Need Bites. And good evening, good evening, everyone. I am not Gosia, ma'am, today. So I am Dr. Swara Bagarwal. And again, let us begin. Meghna, your ma'am will be back, I guess. Right. So for time being, I am there to help you out with your this need bite session. Good evening, Paras. Good evening, Aditya. Welcome, everyone. So I am pretty good, Dimple. So quickly, all of us should settle down and let us start discussing this unit. And in fact, this chapter of our last unit of 11th standard, that is locomotion. So this chapter is of locomotion and movement. Para, same here. I'm happy to. <laughs> Aims in veins. That's a very wonderful ID that you have. So I hope everyone will settle down pretty quickly. And we are all ready to roll and see what all is there in store for us. Good evening. Let's start, Nazim. I'm all set. Development tech, that's a nice idea again. Anyways, so let's get going. So when we talk about locomotion and movement, I hope everyone of us know what is the difference between the two terminologies, locomotion and movement. Locomotion definitely means displacement from one place to another, right? in space and time that is locomotion movement simply means as am i moving am i i am moving my lips as of now so but i'm not locomoting i'm not moving from one place to another in space right only a part of my body is showing a little bit of motion here and there yes so we all are pretty much where is ma'am aman <laughs> i am there in place of your ma'am today and I know all of you love your mom a lot and probably she'll be back with you in the next class, right? So meanwhile, I'm Dr. Saurabh Agarwal and I'm very glad to be with you all uh, to help you out with this uh, Need Bite session. Yes. All right. So let's get going and let's talk about locomotion and movement chapter a bit more. So do we use different kind of machinery for locomotion and movement in our body, or is it always the same? Hello, Aditi. Same here. I'm also happy to see you. Oh, Shriya, welcome back. I'm happy to see you. Hi, Adarsh. So do we use different uh, type of cells for locomotion and movement or the same type? No different. How can that, that be, Aditya? See, the Hydra let's talk about the hydra hydra uses its tentacle to capture food as well as for locomotion and i may use my leg to kick up my chair while i am sitting and also i can use it for locomotion right so many times we are using the same organs or the same set of limbs for both the things right and let us uh, come down to the cellular level so we are using muscle cells, right? So muscle cells are being used for locomotion as well as movement in human body. <laughs> Anil, am I, is that not true? Yes, yes. As cilia in us exhibit movement, yes. See, cilia is there in some of our tubes, inside tubes, right? And it helps in movement of things over those tubes whether it is my fallopian tube, whether it is my uh, bronchi. So over there, you will find the cilia. Is there any cell of my body which locomotes with the help of a flagellum? I have a question here. Aditya, any cell of my body which locomotes with the help of a flagellum? Let's make it quick. OK, looks like no one is answering well. Of course, I know all of you must be knowing it. It's pretty simple. It is a sperm. All right, let's move ahead and let us quickly deal with the questions. So extremities of long bones. 
possess cartilage and what kind oh some mucosal gland in intestine you want me to help you understand what exactly is it <laughs> well rajesh attend merit nation classes and revise the previous lectures and you'll get to know right so here oh my god all of you know the answer i'm pretty happy to know that the answer is d extremities of long bones possess cartilage right and cartilage are a type of connective tissue and they the extremities of long bones contain a cartilage which is rich in hyaline right so the the cartilage which is present on the extremities of long bones what do i mean by extremities of long bones so my femur is a long bone and the extremity of my long bone is this area obviously i had discovered with a cartilage and the cartilage is rich in hyaline right all right okay yes the extreme ends are kanksha absolutely right so long bones function in what this says our aipt pmt 1993 question <laughs> Yeah, let's focus here, please, guys. Parimal Saha, where is the wrong information given to you? Kindly answer this question. Let's make it quick. The answer is C. C. The whole erythropoiesis says. Right, synthesis of leukocytes as well as support. All the three functions are performed by long bones. E is the answer over here. They support erythrocyte synthesis in, occur in them. And obviously leukocyte development as well as differentiation occurs over there. Right. So hematopoiesis completely occurs in the bone marrow of the long bones. All right, let's move on. And let's see the next one pretty quickly. This should be pretty simple for all of us. This is a very basic and a fundamental question. Oh, come on. Which iron is essential for muscle contraction? It's not. Come on, let's answer. Let's make it quick. Yes, Nazim, you know it. Yeah, it is C. Absolutely. Calcium ions, which are stored in your sarcoplasmic reticulum of your striated or voluntary muscles. That is the answer. A very simple one. Yes. Okay, let's move on to our next one. Which of the following is a contractile protein of a muscle? Well, this seems to be uh, AIPMT 1998 question again repeated in 2006. But here I have a trick with all of you. Yes, let us study and focus. If we have a session for a very small period of time, hardly half an hour session, maybe less. <laughs> so let us give a little bit of attention. Someone is saying A. Okay, many people are saying it's myosin. And any other option? Okay. Khalil says it is actin. <laughs> so what will be the right answer over here? A or C? Anyone who says it is B or D? Anyone for B or D? I guess no one is there. Everyone is sticking or most of us are sticking or sticking to A, which this we all agree on myosin. See, there are two kind of proteins involved in the contraction of a myofibril or a muscle cell, actin and myosin together, right? So <laughs> over here, there seems to be some ambiguity in this question. So we should be able to figure that out, right? So both of them are the contractile proteins of a muscle cell or a myofibril yes yes so we must use our intelligence 
All right. So this was a trick which I kept for all of us over here purposely to understand. All right, let's move ahead. And here we have another kind of a question. Tendon is made up of what? Is it made up of an adipose tissue? Is it made up of a modified white fibrous tissue, areolar tissue or yellow fibrous connective tissue? What will be the answer over here? Let's make it pretty quick. This is a simple one. A, Meghna, areolar tissue will translate into a fat tissue. You can definitely reject it out. And what is the role of tendon? I think we all know it. They helps us to connect our skeletal muscles with our bones, isn't it? Yes. And okay, Khaled says D, the rest of us, okay, Rajesh also says D, but the answer is B. It cannot be adi uh, adipose tissue, the fat tissue. It cannot be areolar tissue, the C one, right? Now the only two options left is modified white fibrous tissue and yellow fibrous connective tissue. And over here, it is modified white fibrous tissue, right? And tendons are not elastic. They are primarily... Uh, not uh, inelastic, right? So B is your answer over here. So the question is slightly tricky, not very tricky. All right, let's move on to the next one. So ligament is a modified yellow elastic fibrous tissue, inelastic white fibrous tissue, modified white fibrous tissue or none of these. That is the next question. Um, uh, guys, please be very careful about what we all are using. What language? Okay, let's move ahead and let's. Thank you. Okay, let's move ahead. So, yes, A is the correct answer. Absolutely. Right. So, it is a modified yellow elastic fibrous tissue. A very long sentence. Ligament connects two bones with each other. We all know that pretty well, right? And obviously, it contains yellow fibers, right? Of, of course, yellow proteinaceous fibers in this connective tissue, but they are elastic. Ligaments are elastic, tendons are not elastic. We have learned the differences between the tendons and ligaments even in our ninth standard, right? So we know the difference in the elasticity. So obviously, inelastic word, will can be easily this option can be easily rejected out right none of these okay it could be one of the possibilities modified white white fibrous tissue see white fibrous tissue was there in the tendons but our tendons were non were inelastic but ligaments are elastic so they contain modified yellow elastic fibrous tissue yes harsh is absolutely right please do that and let us concentrate here let us focus let us come back uh, let's uh, talk about a topic, not anything else. So this is a wonderful and a very easy question which has come up. And it says, what is sarcomere? It is a part between two H lines, part between two A lines, part between two I bands or part between two Z lines. Yes, this is a very simple and a straightforward question. Right, we know the sarcomere is a functional unit of a myofibril or a muscle cell and it extends from one Z line to another Z line, right? So, and of course, to my uh, Z lines, I have got the so-called thin filaments of actin extending, right? But they don't extend all the way into the center of the sarcomere in the center of a sarcomere we know pretty well yes we have the so-called m line right and from the m line we have our thick filaments of myosin we have the thick filaments of myosin right and if you all try to recall a bit more, 
you will be able to note one more thing over here. Just a second. So let's make it a little quick. So you will be able to note we do have this zone, the H zone, where only your thick filaments are present. Only your thick filaments are present. The myosin filaments are present, but not the actin filaments. Yes, in your H zone. Right, right. And we know about I zone as well as the A zone. Right, I zone is a region where my actin filaments are present. Right, A zone is extending beyond the H zone where my myosin filaments are present. So this is my A zone. Sorry, I have extended a bit ahead. This is my A zone up to the myosin filaments and beyond this I have only the actin filament so that will be my eye zone or the isotropic zone and then isotropic zone okay let's move on to the next one this is again a very easy one but seems to be a little technical and it is of AI PMT 2005 which of the following pairs is correctly matched is it the hinge joint between your vertebrae, the gliding joint between the zygopapyces of the successive vertebrae, cartilaginous joint of the skull bones, fibrous joint between your phalanges? <laughs> so which is the correct pairing over here? Hinge joint between your vertebrae. Oh my God, Aditi. That will not be the answer, dear. That is not the location of your hinge joints. Cartilaginous joint, skull bones. Your skull bones are most of the all the bones in your skull are immobile except for the lower jaw bone or the mandible. Right. And these immobile bones are articulated or joined with each other with the help of a fibrous joint. So skull bones have the fibrous joint. Yes, the correct answer is B gliding joint between the zygopophysis of the successive vertebrae. So between the vertebrae, we have a joint. And of course, that's why I am able to bend forward, bend backward, right? Do a little bit of twist and turns here and there. So it's a gliding joint, the articulation between the two vertebrae zygophysis is basically planar. Right, and the two articulating surfaces can easily glide past over each other. So that's why it's a gliding joint. I hope that helps. Zygopophyses are basically, yes, the gliding joints are also there in your phalanges, in your carpals, right? Metacarpals. Right. So here the correct match is B only. None else. Arati, these are the articulating surfaces or the surfaces at which the two vertebrae are in contact with each other. So that they can actually glide over each other. Right. Okay. So select the correct statement with respect to the locomotion in humans. So this should be an easy one. It was asked in NEET 2013. A very easy question. Accumulation of uric acid crystals in joints causes their inflammation. Is it a true statement or a false statement? All right, let us talk about the second question. A, Aditya says A is the answer. You came up with the answer pretty quickly, but you didn't <laughs> answer my question, whether it's a true statement. 
yes it's a true statement yes so answer should be a definitely the other statements we need not even read because in mcq only one is true out of the four the vertebral column has how many vertebrae if uh, thoracic vertebrae if not 10 how many thoracic vertebrae yes a is true khalil d is not the answer over there Rithik, you have to simply pick up. There are four statements. You have to pick up the correct statement. Right. First statement is correct. And it leads to a disease called as GOT. If you remember that. Accumulation of uric acid crystals in joints causes their inflammation and difficulty in movement of your hinge joint specially. Right. Which is present at the region of your elbow and knees. Right. And leads to GOT. G-O-U-T. If you remember that disease. Right. So the joint between adjacent vertebrae is not a fibrous joint. A fibrous joint makes the two bones immobile. Im they cannot move, right? So we have just seen it was a gliding joint. The decreased level of progesterone causes osteoporosis in old people. No. Yes, got is the answer in this case. It will not be arthritis. Anil, I hope you got my point. Yes, Aditi, we are talking in case of humans. The question talks of humans only, right? And okay, let us see uh, the next thing. So it says the decreased level of progesterone. No, in human females only, the decreased level of estrogen post menopause are responsible for decrease in their bone density, right? So that will be the answer. And with that, what is tetany? Meghna, it is basically a disease or uh, you can say when your muscles are uh, unable to function properly, right? And they remain contracted for a long time. This is basically due to lack of calcium ions <coughs> in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Their sequestering is not uh, okay, Nazim. All right. So that is it. And all of us who are in 11th standard, we will be giving need in our uh, after our 12th standard board examination. So you can go to this link, uh, which is given there in the description below, and or this URL, and fill in your information and tell others also if they want a little bit of help in their need preparation. Definitely, we are there to help them out. <clears throat> So I think that was it. It was a quick and a short recap of the chapter locomotion and movement. We will be back and see you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.